It's an interesting passage of Scripture because all of us come to God the same way, right? There's, there's so many different things that happen in our lives and there's so many things that keep us from God, but yet each and every one of us, regardless of who we are, have the same problem that keeps us from God. And it's a four-letter word. Mm. I've got visitors giggling and members going, oh my gosh, what is he going to say? (laughs) Great or small, it doesn't matter. There's one thing that keeps us locked up and it keeps us from experiencing joy in life. And I have one question for you today. But before I can ask that question of all of you, I'm going to answer it myself. And it's going to get very honest very quickly. Jesus was walking along the way with his disciples after he had just told them in the last chapter, right? He told them that he was going to have to go to Jerusalem, that he was going to be persecuted, he was going to be put on trial, he was going to be killed, and he was going to rise again, right? And then Peter pulls him aside and goes, no, we can't have this happen. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You're not thinking about what we need to think about. So they're still walking. And again, Jesus tells them, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to arrest me. They're going to persecute me. They're going to put me on trial. They're going to kill me. Three days later, I'm going to rise. And the disciples, it says again, don't understand. He's already told them once. Here he is telling them again. They don't understand it. And then they, that next little part of that phrase there. And they didn't ask any questions because they were afraid. So then, when they get to where they're going, Jesus says, what were you guys talking about? As if Jesus had to ask them in the first place what they were talking about, right? He already knew what they were talking about, but he asked them. And they don't want to tell him because they were arguing about who was greatest. Why? Because fear leads us to do stupid things, right? Why does it matter who's the greatest in the kingdom of God if we're all going to be there? In other sections of the scripture, they ask, they come to Jesus, the two, James and John, right? This is all of the disciples here, but in other gospels, this is James and John arguing about who's going to be greatest. They come to Jesus and they say, one of us, let one of us sit at your right hand and one at your left hand. And the fun part to that is you actually have to think, who is sitting at Jesus' right hand or left hand? The Father. Because we confess every week that He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So if He's seated to the right hand of the Father, the Father is on His left hand side. So now James or John wants to take the seat of God the Father. Think about that one for a moment. But the word here that we need to worry about, worry about, is fear. And my question for you this morning is, what are you afraid of? And before I can make you answer that question, I would have to answer that question. What am I afraid of? I'm going to try to do this without crying, but it's not going to happen. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be a good husband. I'm afraid that I'm going to let my children down. I'm afraid that I'm not going to have enough money to pay my bills because I don't spend my money wisely. I'm afraid that I'm going to miss a call from somebody in this congregation who needs me. I'm afraid that I'm going to let one of you down because I'm not there when you need me. I'm afraid that we're not going to make our budget and that we're going to have to start making cuts on things 
And the biggest two things that we have to cut are me and Carrie. There's so many things in life that if we stop and let fear grab hold of us, it's going to take us to a place that we don't want to go. Because fear is something that leads us to worry about what's going to happen in the future. Or to quote one of my favorite movies, fear leads to anger, and anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. If you don't know what movie that's from and you're in confirmation, you need to find out. And you need to watch it. But fear has a way of inching into our lives. It has a way of making us hold on to things that we shouldn't be holding on to. It has a way that makes us look at things in the future in a way that we don't need to look at them. Because Jesus, knowing what the disciples would argue about, about who's the greatest in the kingdom of God, he asked them, and when they wouldn't answer him, he said to them, if you want to be first, you have to be last. And if you want to be master, you have to be servant. Which he plainly showed to each and every one of them the night that he was betrayed in the Gospel of John, where they were sitting at dinner and he took off his outer robe and tied a towel around his waist and washed the feet of every last one of his disciples, including the one that handed him over later that night. Judas was there when the feet were washed. He served the one who handed him over to trial, persecution, and death. And he knew what was going to happen because that same night he prayed in the garden and it said that sweat flowed as if it was blood, right? He was so nervous and fearful about what was going to happen, it wasn't sweat anymore coming out of him. It was blood. Fear will grab hold of us and lead us to places that we don't want to go. So how do we not do that? How do you not worry? And if you can answer that question, please see me after worship and tell me. Because if there's a problem that I have, it's worry. I worry about a lot of things. Which probably isn't good because that makes your blood pressure go up. Makes your heart beat faster. And you just get anxious about stuff. You can listen to God. Because... Can you change anything that's going to happen by worrying about it or be fearful about it? No. I can worry about my children um, getting in with the wrong people, of getting and doing things that they shouldn't be doing, taking drugs, doing you know, bad things, getting arrested. You know, every parent's nightmare, that phone call at 1.30 in the morning from the state police, they have your child arrested. I don't think I really have to worry about that. But as a parent, you still think about that, right? Regardless of how good your children are, there's the possibility that something bad could happen. And you can worry about that. But worrying about that is not going to change it. Fear can take us and envelop our lives and keep us from the joy that God has from us. But if we can take life as God intended us to take life, He sat down with the disciples and said, if you want to be first, you've got to be last. If you want to be master, you've got to be servant. And then what did he do? He brought a child into their midst and sat down, which was completely unheard of because children were to be, we say now, right? This is, this is seen and not heard. In Jesus' day, children were to not be seen and not be heard. They were not to be around at all. Women could be there because they were serving. This is Jesus' day. I'm not saying that this is the way it's supposed to be. (laughs) Women were there because they were serving. They weren't to be talking. They weren't to be doing anything. Children were to not be there at all. So for Jesus to sit down amongst a group of men and bring a child into their midst and say, this is how you're supposed to be to enter the kingdom of God, 
was completely throwing everything on top of its head. But that's it, isn't it? Not to say that children don't have fears, but most children are so trusting with everything that they'll follow and go. Like you watch those things on, on TV where you see those children who have gone to help somebody find their dog. Those are the children that I know my children would be. Someone would come up and say, I've lost my dog, can you come help me find them? Absolutely. Go on a heartbeat, right? Because we're trusting as children. We're trusting of those who watch out for us because we know that they have our best interest in mind. And that, my friends, is how we dispel fear. Not to say that we still don't have anxieties in the world following Jesus, you will. We're told that throughout the book of the Bible, that followers are not without suffering. But if we can listen to and follow Jesus as a child listens to and trusts their parents and their loved ones who care for them and take care of them every day, that will dispel all fear. Because while we cannot change the future, the person who we're following in Jesus Christ already knows what's going to happen. He's already written that story. He already knows the end. So what is your fear? What are you afraid of? I invite you today as you come forward to take communion to just bring that with you. And leave it right here. Because if we can leave our fears at the foot of the cross, then anything that we're afraid of is going to matter because Jesus is going to take care of it. So I invite you as you come forward to receive the grace of God that he gives us through this meal to leave everything that's burdening you right here and allow him to pick you up and to carry you out of this place so that we can go forward in his mission, not worrying about what's going to happen because we know that he's already in control and is going to lead us down the path that he needs us to go down. He will take care of us if we can lay it in his hands. So leave it all right here and allow him to show you his grace and love.